In previous videos, I showed several basic ways of estimating the uncertainty in a calculation. In this example, I'm going to use a little bit more advanced method for doing it. And the first thing I want to do is write down what my best estimate of the quantities um, here are. So 10.00 is going to be my best estimate of the length of this box. 20.00 is the best estimate of the width. And the best estimate of the height is 5.0. The uncertainties can be given variables as well. We're going to use uh, sigma L to represent the uncertainty in the length and that is 0 0.05 meters. Sigma W will be 0 0.05 as well. And we see that uh, the height was measured less precisely. The uncertainty is 10 times greater, 0.5. All right, so uh, our next step here is going to be to find our best estimate which would be length times width times height. And for that, we just simply take the best estimate of each measurement involved and multiply them through. And it comes out to a thousand, but due to the um, two sig figs in the height, I'm going to make it 1.0 times 10 to the 3. And that'll be meters cubed. All right, so what we'd like to do is figure out how much the uncertainty in the length will contribute to uncertainty in the volume in this next calculation. Uh, so to do it, we're going to use a new notation here. And this just says that the uncertainty in the volume due to the length will be given by L plus sigma L times W times H. So we leave the width and the height alone, uh, and we just introduce the uncertainty in the length. Okay, But once we get that, we can't stop there. We also have to subtract the best estimate of that volume as well to see what the difference between the two will be. So we'll get 10.00 plus 0.05 times 20 times 5. Okay, so this gives us 5. We want to do this for all the different measurements. It turns out that the height is the largest contributor to uncertainty in our volume. 
Okay, now this is just an estimate of what the uncertainty could be due to the different measurements. What we have to do now is get the total uncertainty in the volume. And to do it, we're going to use what's called quadrature. And this is where we take each of the uncertainties that we had found and square them. And then we take the square root of the sum of the squares. I get 100.2 meters cubed. So when we go to write our final answer, we want to take our best estimate from before. And we'll start off with that. And we'll put plus or minus the uncertainty that we found from the quadrature. Now we don't want to give too much information here. Uh, I'm just going to round my uncertainty to one sig fig, which is typical, uh, maybe two sig figs, but no more than two generally. So um, let's make it 1.0 times 10 to the third plus or minus 100 meters cubed. All right, now this was just a basic rudimentary estimate of the problem. It works well because this is a box, but uh, for more complicated mathematical functions, we would want to use a different approach uh, involving partial derivatives. All right, so our function was V equals LWH. And the true formula here for our uncertainty will be this. The square root of the partial derivative of v with respect to the first variable times the uncertainty in that variable. And then we'll square that. And we want to do the same thing for every variable that appears. And this is going to be the formula that will give us our uncertainty in V more precisely for many functions. In this case, it's actually going to turn out to be the same as it was uh, with the other method. All right, so we have to take a partial derivative uh, of V with respect to L. That means that we treat all other variables as if they were constants, as if they were numbers, perhaps. So just imagine if this was like L times 2 times 3, then what would be the derivative? You would eliminate your L variable and just keep the constants, right? So that's actually going to be our partial derivative with respect to L. All right, we want to do this for W as well. And now h and l are treated as the constants. They're treated as the numbers, right? And, and w is the variable. Uh, so with that in mind, l and h will stay. Then finally, we'll do it one more time. In this case, l and w will be constant. h is the variable. That's what this notation says. And our answer will be LW. Now we can go through and replace our partial derivatives with the formulas that we had found. So we'll get WH 
sigma L squared L H sigma W squared L W sigma H squared. Okay. We want to plug in the length, width, and height from our best estimate. Okay, so uh, let's see. According to the givens here, our length is 10, width is 20, and height is 5. Let's just write that down. It's 10. All right, so we'll have 20. Uh, okay, our uncertainty in L was 0.05. Uncertainty in W was 0.05. Our uncertainty in the height is 0.5. So let's plug that in. Okay, we're going to get 5 squared plus 2.5 squared plus 100 squared. Same as we had gotten using the other technique. And again, our uncertainty in V comes out to 100 meters cubed. So we want to do now V plus or minus sigma V. Our best estimate of the volume was 1000 meters cubed plus or minus uh, 100.2 meters cubed. But of course, we always want to be attentive to the number of sig figs that we're expressing. Uh, this wouldn't be good here because this only shows one sig fig. I want to express two sig figs uh, based on the fact that my height has two, my width has four, and my length has four. So I want to express at least two. And that's why I use 1.0 times 10 to the 3 meters cubed. Okay, then when we go to express our uncertainty, we don't want to say um, that we know the uncertainty to the tenths place here. We'll just put 100 meters cubed. Notice here that our significant digit in the uncertainty is in the hundreds place. And the most precise significant digit we give in our best estimate is also in the hundreds place. And that's what we're looking for here.